Of course, it does have that Game & Watch, which works incredibly well as that pressure relief, but it is there is the potential to get overwhelmed here if Gutbuster isn't playing and on point. Yeah, so we're going to be seeing the nest to start off from PK Chris. We're not seeing him use it as an anchor in the back. We're actually going to be seeing him spearheading his offense with this character. And he's going against DK. And, you know, famously, DK has a difficult time in these combos. And we know a thing or two about PK Chris. He can take you for a ride if you're not careful. Yeah, we're already seeing that right off the bat. 0% taking a big PK Thunder 2 just to catch him getting back on stage. I cannot believe that he went for that this early, my guy. And, you know... This is where DK tends to strive a little bit because they are a grappler at heart. They get really good uh, damage off of their grabs at any given moment, especially those cargo throws. But Ness is a floaty character too, so we could definitely see him be susceptible to a little bit of that. Honestly, it's a battle of advantage from right now. Yeah, Gunbuster just desperately trying to look for his way in against the flurry of aerials coming out from Ness. The cross up on the Gandalf attack, unfortunately, gonna lead to that back throw KO, and in comes the Rob. Rob is gonna be a little bit I think better to deal with the Ness. Obviously, this character is seeing a, a big surge in usage and wins uh, recently. They've been good since the game came out, but only recently we've seen people figure out how good this character is. And, you know, having an item pool at any point against Ness is super valuable. Yeah, particularly during the online era, Rob has just continued to rise up, really, really show his strength, just become the dominant character pretty much so far. Even though the character's not winning tournaments, the character is uh, getting incredible results, so much representation in the higher brackets. Yeah, I mean, you, you got players like Zomba, you got uh, you got your man uh, Anathema, who's here from Florida, who made a big run at Low Tide City a couple months ago. And I mean, it just, you, they're continuing to become more relevant as the weeks come on. Wadi's here in the building. He's actually in the player camp, if you look closely enough. But so far, just got Boss having a really, really hard time getting back to the ground. Another back throw KO coming out, coming out from PK Chris. Is this going to be a clean sweep just with the one character? I'm going to be honest, It's he's making it look very convincing. This is obviously his Ness, his best character, his ace that he's leading with. And he is tearing completely apart Gutbuster in these instances. A beautiful movement around that up smash. Can't even get, can't even use the bucket to get rid of those projectiles, get rid of those PK flashes, deter PK Chris from kind of going for his core game plan. Good trade for Gutbuster right there. Oh, that's going to be a punish. No, too slow on the full tilt. Man, it is insane how much hit stun that move does. And instead of opting for the back air, which would have killed anyway, he goes for one step further, goes for the spike down air. Take that stock. And that was a clean sweep, a three stock with the Ness only. Yeah, very, very dominant first game coming out from PK Chris. It, it makes you wonder, like, where do you kind of go from there as Gutbuster? Do you have to swap the team around? you have to try to go for different secondaries because it didn't really feel like any of them were working. Already locked in a Jigglypuff. Okay, so that's already different. Donkey Kong's going to be second, and Game & Watch is going to be in the back too. No, okay, oh, no. he's going to go back to Rob. It was just yeah. for a, it was a beat. Yeah. <clears throat> An elaborate ruse to try to see if PK would switch off, but I think PK knows his strategy. And I wonder if the character order is going to swap a little bit. Okay, and it looks like Falco is going to be up front for... PK Chris this time, and the Ness is going to be in the back. Interesting decision. Maybe he feels like he, you know, given the opportunity, given how one-sided the previous game was, maybe he wants to take the opportunity to warm up the Falco for potential future sets. Yeah, man, thinking that far ahead is, is ridiculous. And I'm going to be real with you. I feel like he also kind of wants to show that he can do it with these other characters as well. Yeah. And maybe having the Ness as an anchor, considering it just completely swept Gutbuster, is is a good sign for him because like okay i'll just bleed his characters a little bit then bring out the nest when he has he's down two maybe three characters already and i can show myself there and the falcon's gonna be losing early gutbuster with the rob out early again and now the yoshi comes out yeah did not keep track of that jump off stage and unfortunate with the recovery right there very kind of similar sort of flow to what we're probably going to see from the falco or what we wanted to try and see with this Yoshi, we're going to see a lot of kind of heavy pressure coming out from the eggs just to work his way in. Usage of the back air to apply that pressure, but Gabbos doing a good job trying to keep PK Chris at bay so far. Oh, nice wow. forward air. Amazing. He comboed off the egg, too. I'm surprised I didn't kill. That was amazing DI from Gutbuster, who's fighting back in with the gyro. And everything he gets right now is all extra credit, baby. He's all trying to get this extra percentage and maybe even a stock if he can live long enough, but PK Chris is going to try not to let that happen. 
Okay, back, gets back on stage for the Nair. Has the gyro in hand, not able to cover that part of the platform and gets the catch with the side B. Got Buster now up two whole characters, but now he has to deal with this Ness with a bleeding Rob and a Rob that has been sent to the trash heap. Yes, and if, if PK Chris wants to win this one again, he's going to need to get a clean sweep yet again because Gutbuster might have taken a little bit of damage with the Rob, but it was only the Rob. He still has his two characters in the back, and the DK is proving to be a little bit of a challenge for PK Chris right now. Yeah, this DK looking a lot more fierce than it did in the previous game. But PK Chris getting some momentum, those, important, those ever important forward airs to get the stage control. He's going to try to go for a jab lock, but uh, just barely mistimes it. And Gutbuster still hanging out over the top, getting a ton of damage, 85%, and the F smash is going to connect. I can't believe those fingers are a strong hitbox, man. They're just <laughs> so long. Very, very long indeed. Love the spacing. Just maintaining that center stage it was Gutbuster and just spacing beautifully around that PK fire upon landing. Just get that final F smash. Complete reversal, complete 180, pretty much what we saw in the previous game. I definitely think PK Chris is going to go back to that Ness in the point spot. Yeah, now the big question is, do we see PK Chris opt for a similar strategy that they did, you know, for game one because it worked? Or are, are you going to try to freak your opponent out by making them think you're going to do the same thing? Because, frankly, I, I would expect the PK uh, Chris to go for Ness slot one again, and then I'd go for something to counter that. But no, he's going to stick true. This time he's starting with the Yoshi instead of the Falco, though. Now, to be fair to PK Chris, the Falco did lose that stock uh, unexpectedly early. So yes. maybe just wanting to shift up this order ever so slightly to allow the Falco a little bit more breathing room, a little bit more breathing time. Maybe if the Yoshi dies first, that the Game of Watch is at death percent to a Falco confirm yeah. and the Falco is able to get momentum from there. Already the Yoshi's doing a lot of work on this Game of Watch here. A couple bits of damage and uh, using those disjointed tails very effectively as well as uh, just mo mixing up the air movement. I think that's the big thing that Yoshi brings to the table, not just the double jump armor, but also the air acceleration that they have, as well as their ability to change directions on a dime, no matter what the cost. And that double jump so high uh, to add a little bit of extra mobility on top of everything. That's that though, the tables are turning right now. Gutbuster doing a great job keeping PK Chris in the air for a good while, tacking on 100 or almost 90%. Yeah, very close, and and that was mostly damage unanswered too. There were a little bit of trades in between there, but nothing nothing substantial there. And we're looking to see one of these guys grip and rip for a big hit. Oh, oh, no, PK no, Chris no. jumped in a little bit too quickly, Virum. Yeah, you cannot challenge that Game & Watch up smash in that position. There is, of course, that invul on the full body uh, during the active frames of the move, making it a great option to brute force through moves. Yeah, so we're going to see the Falco come out again. Now, this Falco only survived to about 40% because of a uh, bad recovery route that was taken from PK Chris. So now they're going to try and live a little bit longer. They do have 141 on the Gut Buster. Now, here's the issue about uh, Falco. Falco needs to get a confirm or just a raw committal option like that back air. But nice catch on the spot dodge, all things considered. And we're going to have the DK coming out to work. Now, of course, DK, huge, huge character. One solid hit from Falco. There's the starter into the up tilts. Big chunk of damage. Yeah, already evening up the percentages. And, you know, this DK that completely bled out the Ness last match is here to work. And honestly, getting this much damage on it with the Falco is substantial. Actually, Chris is buying to take the stock first. Yes. And he does. And there we go. Beautiful sequence overall coming out from PK Chris. Just. Choosing really, really good uh, moments to engage and disengage against DK in disadvantage, just so that he can maintain that advantage for as long as possible. We're going to see it once more here. Great no. down air, but not able to get the up air follow-up, but it still oh continues. God. The down air, the footstool. That was three down air straight, and man, he was trying to go for something else. He gets another down air out of that combo. This is the influence of Tilde on the <laughs> Smash scene. People started combos with those downers, and PK Chris, one of Tilde's friends, obviously, since they were doubles partners, Picked up on that in a big way. And 121 percentage on the Rob is looking like PK Chris wants to win this match. Yeah, this is very, very a difficult situation against a character like Ness, who has that incredible back throw, who has a plethora of strong killing aerials like that neutral air. And that will be the move to take the set 2-1 to PK Chris. Yeah, that Nair is so good. It kills, it does damage. It's really good out of shield. It's anti-cross upable because it hits both sides. Yeah. And it's a pretty sizable hitbox, all things considered, as well. So an amazing play 
from PK Curse to come out on top of that one. And you know, at the beginning of the set, we thought it was going to be the Ness to come out on top, and it absolutely was. The Ness was the thing to put them over the edge, but that Falco was clean as hell. Yeah. When it wasn't SDing in that second game, we got to really see it show its stuff in that third game. It just went crazy with maintaining advantage, with keeping those strings up, even at the points where we saw those small drops. Obviously, this Falco not 